As we mentioned before, we lost a legend, and that is WWE Hall of Famer Mean Gene Oakland passing away at the age of 76. And to share some moments and memories and to talk about Mean Gene, we have a WWE Hall of Famer himself, the great J.R. Jim Ross. J.R., how are you, man? Oh, I've been better, fellas, but thanks for having me on. Yeah, this one, this is a tough one. And, you know, we, we talked a lot about Gene Oakland earlier in the show as soon as we found out of the passing. And obviously, you know, Bully and I, you know, want to talk about his career and his life and as a celebration. But I, as a fan, this just hits home. So many great mem- moments and memories when you look at what he did in WCW, what he did in WWF, and what he did in AWA. Not too many interviewers that you could say did it better than Mean Gene Oakland, Jr. Well, I never uh, met anybody that was better than Gene Oakland uh, in his role. Of, you know, he was a, he was a great uh, uh, interviewer. He was a great host. Uh, you know, he he was just a, a big he's a pitch man. Uh, I, I thought Gene, I, he and I used to kid and laugh about the fact that he used to be play by play, and he swore to me that he was no good at it. Until I heard some tapes, he was he was really good at it. So, uh, but I think the role of the interviewer just fit his personality very you know very well. He was quick witted. He thought on his feet. He was very very bright. And of course, uh, the main thing that we all wish we had that he had was that great voice. And it's so distinctive. And and it was a signature. When you heard that voice, you knew that uh, you were listening to Mean Gene, who was the best at what he did uh, in his in his genre. So, you know, I just saw Gene in November at uh, uh, WrestleCade in, in uh, Winston-Salem. And, you know, we had a couple of cocktails together. We, we laughed. We told some stories. You know, he was always good for a few Heenan stories because Bobby and Gene were it, it just, you know, they were phenomenal. Then you had Martin Sings to that group. But it's hard to beat, boy. It's not the announcing of today, that's for sure. So uh, he's, I got the messages and they just kept dro- flowing in, and I just, it's just taken my day into a whole different place. Uh, but you know, it's not about me; it's about remembering Gene. And uh, you know, I just, I can consider him one of my best friends in the wrestling business right. ever. And as you guys know, and especially Bully knows, to say you can walk away from a business and have really close friends that you, uh, you value that you would like to have in your home and. Uh, you trust and you, you love, that's a short list. Maybe it's that way in life in general. Hell, I don't know. It sure is that way in wrestling with all the egos, the insecurities, et cetera, et cetera. I got to be over. It's about me. Gene was all about getting the talent over, which is a great lesson the young announcers could certainly learn from today. JR, when you saw him in November, uh, how did he look? Was he Was he sick? Was there anything wrong or, uh, you know? What was up? Well, you know, Gene has had, uh, he had a couple of, uh, I think, uh, liver transplants. I think it was liver. A couple uh, of? Yeah, he, he had, I think he had two, I think. But he had some issues there, uh, and he had some, he had severe swelling in one of his arms and hands. It was uh, really uh, disconcerting in how it looked. He said he was feeling okay, but, you know, Gene didn't want to compromise. Gene didn't want to go to bed early. Gene wanted to live life, and I fully applaud that. Uh, but, boy, it's, it's sure sobering for a guy. You know, I'm going to be 67 tomorrow. And I said on my podcast, which I'm recording later today, that, you know, tomorrows are not guaranteed. And, boy, boy this is a sobering thing because you're getting older, and, you know, who's next, me, somebody else? Uh, so I, 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 I'm going to live like me and Gene. I'm going to live every day and, and, and do something I enjoy. And he did that seemingly every day. Very well read. You know, big Nebraska. He went to University of Nebraska. So we always talk about OU Nebraska football and all that good stuff and all the AWA stories. And it's just, uh, but he, he looked okay. You know, he he put on a little bit of weight, but I think that was part of his uh, transplant issues that he had subsequently. You know, you talk about his interview style, and the one thing I appreciated about Gene Okerlund is he, it, you know, he was always a professional, but 
you know, if if a segment was funny, he would laugh. You know, his facial expressions were amazing as well. But he 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 dropped that wall every once in a while and let the audience in. If something did get a little bit off kilt, he, he didn't mind showing that to the audience. And I think that showed a human side to Gene Oakland that he was able to relate to the fans in that way. You're right, Dave. He he had the courage to to go off script, so to speak. Uh, when he felt it was necessary or make the segment or the piece of television they were doing better. Uh, so he just, uh, he was, I can't even think of anybody close in his league, to be honest with you. You know, now you see, you know, it's fashionable to have young women to be interviewers and stuff, but, and I don't have a problem with that, but you don't see, he's, nobody is cast like Gene was and probably won't be again because uh, the television business is about youth and look, not about experience and talent. And uh, Gene had still, Gene was still the best at what he did, in my view, uh, even in his, at 76. We laughed, we had fun, we talked, we, you know, and we'd call each, he'd call me on the phone every now and then and, you know, just see something, he'd say something in the news on the sports stage or whatever. I just loved him and he was so nice to me. You know, I've said this story when, I was not the most welcome house guest when I first went to WWE in 93. And guys like uh, Heenan and Monsoon and Oakland were my guardian angels. And they took care of me from the get-go and ran a lot of interference because I was, quote-unquote, the enemy mm. from uh, the boys down south, which is so frigging ridiculous. It's not even funny. But uh, that's the wrestling business. He had no ego in that respect, and he wanted me to be successful and help build a brand, and uh, that's how he was. It's all about the team winning. JR, as a fan of Jeans, did you have a particular body of work that you enjoyed him in more, AWA, uh, old WWF, WCW? Well, I liked, uh, you know, his his classic AWA stuff is, you know, is, is textbook. It's uh, something everybody could learn from in, in, in the broadcasting profession in general. But I thought some of his uh, work with Heenan and Monsoon uh, in the early WWF days uh, were was just exceptional. He was they were entertaining. Remember a lot of the matches they did wraparounds for the intros and the reactions to those tape matches were not exactly main event level matches. A lot of them were were uh, you know uh, just enhancement type matches or lack of a better term preliminary matches. But, but Bobby and Gene made those matches entertaining by how they set them up and how they reacted when they came back. And they did a lot with less than probably more than anybody I can think of. And uh, they were great compliments to each other. I just found it ironic. You know, you got uh, Monsoon and Bobby and Gene now all together again. And I, I believe in that. I believe that to be true. And uh, what a, what a, uh, what a, what a group that is right now. The good Lord's got his hands full. <laughs> J- JR, <laughs> right before you came on the air, I, sa- I said to Dave and our audience, can you picture the scene at the pearly gates where Bobby's waiting for him and saying, Gene, what took you so long? <laughs> yeah. Bobby probably walked the pearly gates with uh, one of those traditional tricks he'd like to do where he'd get toilet paper and stick to his shoe and walk out with a roll of toilet paper unrolling as he walked out. He <laughs> loved that one. So I'm sure Bobby met Gene at the Pearly Gates with a toilet paper uh, gimmick on his shoes, <laughs> just so Gene would get a laugh when he got there. Uh, and then Monsoon would say, will you stop? <laughs> God's looking at us. You know, stop. We're, we're, we're lucky to all get here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spit this up. Tr- Don't spit this up for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, Jr. Is there a particular you know moment or memory that sticks in your in your mind the most when it comes to Gene Okerlund? Well, just WrestleMania Nine was my first of WrestleMania, uh, nineteen ninety three at Caesar's Palace, the toga thing, and and just getting dressed with he and Monsoon, who was very very ill that day, which is why I got the assignment, uh, and uh, laughing about putting on our toga. You know, Oakland giving me the the office that don't listen to uh, 
don't listen to Heenan because he wants you to go commando and not wear any underwear under your toga. <laughs> I didn't understand that logic. And King gave me the, uh-uh, mm-mm, don't do that. No, no. And Mom's soon standing behind Heenan waving his hands like, he's trying to, he's ribbing you, <laughs> you know, whatever. But Gene was like, he looked out for me. And he, and he loved my work. And that made me feel so good because someone is a peer. You know, somebody asked me a question the other day, guys, and I don't know how, how you guys can probably relate to this as much as me. Somebody said, do other announcers ever come to you with feedback? Or, or do, they, do they listen to your work? Do they tell you that they uh, learn from you? Or there's, a, there's something that you do well that they'd like to be able to do better type thing? And I said, you know, that's not the wrestling business. We're talking about egos and insecurities in this world. And that's what you have. But Oakland didn't have that. Oakland didn't have any insecurities. He wanted me to do well. He did not wish me to do well. And uh, so, so I said to somebody, I said, you know, I don't know that most TV announcers today, wrestling announcers, are probably know who the hell I am. But Oakland knew. And we. I'm so glad we had that couple of few cocktails there. At, uh, he was drinking wine. He got, he got off of the hard stuff as he would say, and he was drinking w- drinking wine. Now, he might drink a lot of wine, <laughs> <laughs> but he drank wine, and he was trying to take care of himself in that regard. But I just loved him, man. I just loved him so much. He was he was so strong for me when Jan got killed. And you think back about those things. It's not a segment. It's not a wraparound. It's not a great intro. It's just the things that you would interact with somebody in your, in your personal life that you'll take with you to your grave. And uh, so I'm, I really, this has been a hell of a day. I just can't believe that. Uh, I'm just so glad I got to see him again. I'm so glad we spent time. We sat down, we talked. And uh, it just, uh, it was not before the uh, WrestleCade thing started. on the with a Saturday, anyway. So he's, uh, it's just, I, I'm, uh, I'm, in, I'm shocked. I'm in disbelief that we lost him. And, uh, he can't be replaced. They broke the mold. There'll be no more Gene Oaklands, and that's sad. Well, Jr., I, I'm I'm glad you're able to come on with us today. And I think the biggest thing is there's so many people that listen to this show, so many fans of Gene Oakland that not never got to meet him, you know, personally, never got to talk to him. And hearing the stories from you, I think you know we we thought we knew him from watching him on tv but hearing the stories from you we know he was a genuinely you know good guy and 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 a mentor to other people in the business and he cared about people and and we appreciate you coming on and, and sharing some of those stories we really do well you, my pleasure guys i i love this show and i'm a regular listener and so i, I appreciate like any opportunity i had to come on and tell you fellas i can tell you the, i'll leave you with this Gene was still, to the very end, very competitive. He wanted to stay in the game. He wanted to keep his jersey and stay in the game. And for for me, at my stage of life, this back nine thing, uh, it's really given me the lit the fire that I want to stay in the game somehow, some way, because I didn't wasn't sure I had the courage to do it, but I do now. I do now. And so, what happened to Gene is giving me motivation to stay in the game just like he wanted to. So, you know, I'll, I'll see him again one day, but uh, today's a very tough one for everybody. But I appreciate you guys having me on and hope you have a great week. JR, in 2019, in some way, shape, or form, I think you'll be in the game. <laughs> well, this also, Bubba, it's better <laughs> than the alternative, my friend. <laughs> and we'll be listening to you, of course, the Jim Ross report that you can hear on Westwood One. We'll definitely be listening. Uh, I love what you did with Bully. You made Bully great, JR. You know, <laughs> you did an awesome job at that. And, of course, part two of the Jim Cornette interview you're going to be able to hear uh, this week. And, and, and JR, uh, happy birthday, by the way, as well. Enjoy. I uh, will. Thanks, guys, very much.